One more major earthquake in Japan and the nation could face a nuclear disaster 10 times the scale of Chernobyl. That's what experts are telling 7.30. When Japan was hit last year by a massive earthquake and tsunami, the world feared nuclear catastrophe. The nation's Fukushima nuclear reactors were inside the disaster zone. We've not heard much about them for a while, but the danger certainly hasn't passed. Experts say the situation inside the Fukushima reactor number four is precarious, as North Asia correspondent Mark Willisy reports from Fukushima. It's said fortune favours the brave. And after enduring an earthquake, a tsunami and a series of nuclear meltdowns, the people of Fukushima reckon they're due for some luck. For 13 months, this track was idle. Horses and people kept away because of the fear of radiation. But today, Fukushima is out for a flutter. So is this a sign that Fukushima's luck is turning? Possibly. But few here actually realise that a few kilometres to the east, is the spent fuel pool at the Fukushima nuclear plant containing enough nuclear fuel to spawn a catastrophe to dwarf Chernobyl. In the gloom of this pool, a 1331 highly radioactive spent nuclear fuel assemblies, each containing dozens of rods. The spent fuel pool number four at Fukushima, based on my sort of calculations, contains roughly 10 times more cesium-137 than released by the Chernobyl accident. It's also clear from this footage that the pool is littered with debris from last year's disaster. The nuclear fuel in that pool is two and a half times what's needed in a reactor core. It contains 5,000 times more cesium than was released by the Hiroshima bomb, and the pool is just hanging there. We don't know when it could collapse. This is where the pool sits, five storeys above the ground next to the reactor. That is how things are supposed to look. This is how the reactor building looks now, after a hydrogen explosion blew it apart. The blast tore off the roof and caused a reinforced wall of the fuel pool to bulge by up to three and a half centimetres. As for the hundreds of tonnes of spent fuel, until this month, its only protection from the elements was a white plastic sheet. Some nuclear experts warn Japan is literally playing with fire. If there's a crack in the pool and the water drains out, the fuel rods will be exposed. It will then be impossible to cool the fuel. So if an accident happens, 10 times more cesium than has already been released by the Fukushima meltdowns will go into the atmosphere. Depending on which way the wind is blowing, Tokyo could become uninhabitable. Hiroaki Koide is a senior nuclear reactor engineer at Japan's prestigious Kyoto University and one of the experts raising the alarm. As soon as possible, those fuel rods should be removed. Earthquakes are striking almost every day around the Fukushima plant, so I'm praying that a big one won't hit. This warning is echoed by international nuclear safety experts, among them Robert Alvarez, a former advisor to the US Secretary of Energy. You have a very, very large concentration of radioactivity where the only thing that keeps that radioactivity from being released through a catastrophic fire is a pool of water. That pool is 100 feet off the ground in a structurally damaged building in a high-risk earthquake zone. I mean, what more can you be worried about? But the operator of Fukushima, TEPCO, brushes all this aside, arguing that despite being open to the elements and in a damaged building 30 metres above the ground, the pool is safe. We checked its condition the other day, and although there is a bulge in one wall, we don't think this will have any effect on the soundness of the pool or the building. We believe both can withstand a large earthquake. And on the matter of removing the fuel rods, TEPCO appears in no great hurry. The original method was to take out the spent fuel by a crane attached to the ceiling of the building, but that's been damaged, so we're thinking of installing a crane for this. We would like to start removing the fuel sometime next year. They have to have a heavy overhead crane, 
they're going to have to uh, manipulate the spent fuel underwater constantly, put it into containers that are very heavy, involving uh, perhaps uh, uh, containers that may weigh as much as 100 tons. Uh, this requires extraordinary precautions, even under a routine basis. So, given the 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 magnitude of the damage, that sort of ups the stakes quite a bit in terms of of the capability to safely remove this material. Ever since the meltdowns, TEPCO has maintained a veil of secrecy over what's happening at Fukushima. But one man has managed to penetrate it. Tomohiko Suzuki is a rarity in Japanese journalism, a reporter prepared to put his health on the line to get to the truth. When I went undercover as a worker at the Fukushima plant, I wore protection gear. For over my sleeve, I wore this watch, which has a secret camera inside. With his secret camera watch and other hidden devices, Suzuki recorded life inside the Fukushima plant. Working next to the Reactor 4 building, he was shocked by what he was told about the fuel pool 30 metres above him. I spoke to a worker who helped reinforce the Reactor 4 building. He said the spent fuel pool has vast amounts of heavy water in it and that the steel support frames were damaged. But he told me that the reinforcement of the pool was jerry-rigged. So if a typhoon or a tornado hits, it will be dangerous. Sound far-fetched? Well, just last month, a neighbouring prefecture to Fukushima was smashed by the most violent tornadoes recorded in Japanese history. I call it the sickness of Japan. First, we hide, then we postpone, and then we assume no responsibility. Mitsuhei Murata is a former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland. He's brought his fears about the fuel pool to the attention of the United Nations Secretary-General, Ban Ki-moon. TEPCO and the government of Japan not only lacks the ability, but the intention. So in your opinion, if there was a problem with that fuel pool, it would be the end of Japan? Yes, and there is no one who denies that. We cannot sleep peacefully. So who should the people of Fukushima back? A collection of nuclear experts, journalists and concerned activists struggling to be heard? Or TEPCO with its history of cover-ups and incompetence? I do not believe TEPCO. I do not feel safe at all. Radiation levels are still high. TEPCO says the fuel pool can withstand the next big earthquake. But I can't believe this. That's why I'm so worried. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And we are sort of charting unknown waters here. And uh, this is a problem that if such an event were to occur, it would be of an international dimension.